One of the most important aspects of any chemical reaction is how much heat it produces or absorbs. We typically express this heat as delta H, the change in enthalpy between products and reactants. And you'll recall that enthalpy is just energy measured when the reaction occurs open to the atmosphere. So it's important for anyone carrying out a reaction to know what the enthalpy change is. Of course, one way of finding delta H is to go in the lab and measure it using a calorimeter. But there are millions of compounds, and therefore millions of reactions. So it would keep a lot of chemists employed for centuries, if not millennia, to directly measure every possible delta H. That's not practical. Fortunately, there is a regular pattern in nature that we can exploit to overcome this problem. And that involves two principles we'll talk about today. Hess's Law and Heats of Formation. First, Hess's Law. This principle takes advantage of the fact that enthalpy, like energy, is a so-called state function. You'll recall that this means that the enthalpy change for a process will be the same no matter how we get from the starting set of conditions to the final conditions. In other words, if we get from reactant to products in one step or in a series of steps, the delta H will be the same. Take the burning of carbon, for example. When carbon reacts with oxygen, it can form either CO or CO2. There is a delta H for each of these two possible reactions. Now, if CO is formed, each CO molecule can in turn react with more O2 to form CO2. And there is a separate delta H for that reaction as well. And here's the interesting part. We can see it best in this diagram. The sum of delta H values for the two reactions, C plus O2 equals CO, and CO plus O2 equals CO2, is exactly equal to the delta H value for C and O2 going directly to CO2. It turns out that this idea works for any combination of sequential reactions. In general, we can say, if a reaction is carried out in a series of steps, delta H for the reaction will equal the sum of the enthalpy changes for the individual steps. In our carbon combustion example, we can express this idea mathematically this way. Delta H1 equals delta H2 plus delta H3. So, the quantity of heat generated by the combustion of carbon to form carbon dioxide is independent of whether the reaction takes place in one step or two. And thus, if we need to know the delta H for a reaction, we might not have to go into the lab and measure it, we might be able to calculate it from the delta H values of other reactions. By way of example, let's use Hess's law in the carbon combustion case to calculate an unknown delta H value from known values. Here's our diagram again, this time showing delta H values for only two of the three reactions. Now how can we calculate delta H for the reaction CO plus O2 equals CO2. Well, according to Hess's law, delta H1 equals delta H2 plus delta H3. Thus, delta H3 equals delta H1 minus delta H2. And doing the calculation, we arrive at this value of delta H for the reaction of CO with O2 to produce CO2. Now, isn't that clever? We can put Hess's law to work for us in a big way by combining it with another important principle, that is the idea of standard heats of formation. To introduce this principle, we need to define some terms. First, the word standard. We say a heat is standard when all the reactants and products are pure and at one atmosphere pressure. A standard heat or enthalpy change for a reaction is expressed as delta H naught. That fine-looking superscript, little zero, is pronounced not and represents the standard nature of this delta H. So delta H not is the standard enthalpy change for a reaction. Second definition, 
heat of formation. This is the heat, or delta H, for a specific kind of reaction. Namely, for the reaction when one, and let me repeat just one, mole of a compound is made from its elements. So, here's a reaction whose delta H is a heat of formation. Note that this reaction satisfies both criteria for a heat of formation. First, only one mole of product is produced. And second, all reactants are elements. A reaction like this doesn't fill the bill. Why? Because two moles of compound are formed. Now for the delta H for this reaction to be a standard heat of formation, each reactant and product would have to be present at one atmosphere pressure, referring specifically to the gases. The symbol for the standard heat of formation, then, is delta H naught sub F. And I bet you can guess what that F stands for. And so we can say that the standard heat of formation of CO2 is minus 394 kilojoules per mole. And everybody who hears this, and who has been initiated into the secret society of thermodynamicists, will know that this is the delta H naught for this reaction. So, what do we do with the standard heats of formation? We predict delta H values for other reactions. Indeed, for any reaction. We do this by using the following relationship. The delta H for the reaction is equal to the sum of the heats of formation of the products minus the sum of the heats of formation of the reactants. In plain English, we add up the heats of formation of all the products and subtract all the heats of formation of the reactants, and that gives us the delta H naught for the reaction. Oh, and by the way, we have to multiply each term by the stoichiometric coefficient in the balanced reaction, and we'll see that in our example. So let's see how it works now. We'll use the following example to illustrate. Let's say we want to know the delta H naught for this reaction. The delta H naught for the reaction will equal 2 times the heat of formation of NO2 minus 2 times the heat of formation of NO minus the heat of formation of O2. Okay, well and good. But how will we find these delta H naught sub F values? Well, here's the beautiful part. Previous generations of selfless chemists have already done the hard work for us. They've gone into the lab and measured the heats of formation of thousands of compounds and put these values into tables. So we can look them up in our textbook. Furthermore, and here's an important point you'll want to remember, the heat of formation of an unreacted element like oxygen is always zero. Why? Well, think of the definition of heat of formation. Hmm. No heat is produced in making O2 from the unreacted element, now is there? Okay, so we look up the values uh, for NO2 and NO in the tables, plug these into the equation, and voila! Out comes the delta H naught for the reaction. Slick as a whistle.